ZF, a powerhouse in automotive technology, have just released their first e-bike drive system, the Centrix. This new motor puts out an impressive 90 Nm of torque and 600 watts of peak power, which considering the size, is an incredible feat of engineering. ZF are also providing complete e-bike solutions, motors, batteries and controllers that we'll start seeing appear in major e-bike brands soon. ZF might not be a household name, but for over a century they've been a leader in designing high-performance gearboxes for top-tier vehicles. Their transmissions are used in BMWs, Porsche and Audi, and in motorsports they've played a crucial role, integral to many racing successes, including Formula One and 24-hour Le Mans. So it's an absolutely huge player in the, in the automotive industry. Its competences span everything from pretty much submarines to satellites. Within that scope alone, this company already develops and produces three and a half million electric drive systems a year. So not in e-bikes, but over the whole, the whole scope of the products that's covered. And so with that know-how and, and that, let's say, capacity in-house, it's pretty much a no-brainer to get into the, into the e-bike market and, and to develop a system. And then, you know, when you can develop something like this that's uh, two and a half kilos and develop 600 watts, well, I think uh, it's quite a logical choice, really. I've got to say the evolution of e-bike motors over the past four or five years has been incredible. Look at the size of this ZF motor. The cylindrical shape just fits in my hand. It's not much bigger than a can of soda, can of Coke. This is 90 Newton meters. It's a 48 volt system as well. It's really, really compact. There's no traditional motor bolts on here that you often find on mid-drive e-bike motors. And this fits into the e-bike almost on a, on a cradle that holds it in. Really, really compact and a real space-saving design here. So this is 600 watts of peak power 90 newton meters of torque. It's so cool to see ZF's technology and engineering background form its way into e-bike motor systems. So from the side profile, traditionally an e-bike motor might be at least double the length of this. But look just how small it is and compact it is. Not massively wide, but that e-bike motor system has such a small footprint on this bike that manufacturers are able to be really creative with suspension design and battery placement. So neat. I can't believe we're at the stage now that we're getting 90 Newton meter, 600 watt, basically full power e-bike motors in something this small. Dude, this is so, so powerful. It's got more punch than any motor. It's wild. It just punches you forwards with so much force. This is in the boost mode and the punch is instant. Little tiny little crank route and it goes, it shoots off. Okay, this is only a very quick first impression, but the low down punch of this motor is seriously impressive. I want to talk a little bit about um, overrun. It seems like a bit of a buzzword with e-bike systems recently. And, you know, it's a really cool feature. It really can help with rocky, techy sections, getting the bike to carry on moving forward when the rider is not pedaling. And it's, it's quite a new thing, I would say, a new way of biking. Does this, does this have overrun? Do, where do we stand on this? Oh boy, does it have overrun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, that's, definitely come from from our experience from from working on other projects from uh, from being involved in, in the racing scene as well and also having a, a very keen eye to the to the N15194 regulations and so this system what we've done is we, we we've built into it a small amount of overrun for the time being um, because we're still a few months away from from actually delivering samples to the market um, but what we're looking at is we're looking at giving a let's say a a really novel approach as to how that can be done. So for the moment we have uh, we have 1.2 meters of overrun here on Eurobike, specifically in sport mode. So 
for people like yourself who are, who are interested in Overrun and want to know more about it and feel how it works with our system, you can go and do that. But we've intentionally switched it off on other modes so that it's not going to catch uh, the, you know, the, the end consumer that's maybe not expecting a full two meters of Overrun on on boost mode. On Almost like a race, race mode, that, that kind of two meters is what... That's, what's... that's the limit. And we all know that racers like to get as close to the limit as they possibly can. So that that could be possible in future. Uh, that, with... That's entirely possible. And and what we've what we've actually done with this system is, it's not just a full 1.2 meters of overrun when you stop pedaling in in sport mode. It, we've actually done it in a, in a progressive manner. So we can we can interact at any point within the software of the system as to as to what's going to happen. And so what we've chosen to do is up until 7 kph, which with the the tone wheel as we we've seen is is really easily detectable with the system. So up to 7 kph, the, the system's got a really short overrun, 20, 30 centimetres. So you can really feel it as you're feathering the pedals. But then as soon as you get through 7 kph, you get the 1.2 metres. And then nice. you can instantly feel the difference. Now ZF say that the overrun can be tailored. And it's not even at the maximum level at the moment. They've, for the Eurobike testing, they've dialed it down a little bit because they don't want it to be too aggressive. Now I don't even know what this would feel like in the maximum mode because... Damn, this is so powerful. <laughs> I've never ridden anything like it. It just shows that newton meters and watts on paper don't tell the whole story because manufacturers can always quote something and it's very difficult to compare things on paper. But to me, this feels way more powerful than a 90 newton meter 600 watt motor. And it shows that the software and the programming of it make a real difference to the characteristics of the motor and how it performs. But my initial impressions are that this will be amazing on technical rock gardens, features where you need to like really use the bike's momentum and energy to clear features. Having that amount of power instantly available, I don't think I've experienced this before in a normal street legal mid-drive motor. I always try and do this rattle test on e-bike motors to, to see how, how much gear or backlash noise there is. It's a very easy way to pick up motor rattle. And all I can hear is the rear hub making a noise. There's very little, if any, motor rattle or backlash. In fact, ZF are really confident in saying that there's no, zero rattle. How have you made this silent? when you're descending and how, how have you avoided that rattle that can exist in some e-bike motor systems? The main thing is the gearing we use in that. It's a strain wave gearing and it's absolutely free play. So free of play, no play inside. So the, the motor, the electric motor inside will never be pulled. Uh, also the free wheels we use, uh, they are with the highest resolution we could do. So this is why there will never be a rattling noise and also the oil we use inside. Next to the ear you can, uh, you can hear it a little bit, but uh, if it's installed in the bike there's almost nothing. Yeah? So that makes the, the descent completely like on a non-electric bike. How have you got this so compact? Like evolution of e-bike motor systems over the past five or six years is incredible. A motor of this kind of power output four or five years ago might have been that big and we've got slightly smaller, but to have something that's this compact, how, what is the magic inside this that's allowed you to do that? Yeah, uh, honestly, it's, uh, it's the same technology <laughs> which is responsible for the silent descents. It's the strain wave gearing, so that allows us to build the motor on one ax as a one axle concept. So no, there's no second axle, no planetary gears, nothing. We only have one axle, everything is directly mounted on this axle, the free wheels, everything, the free wheels for the motor, the outer runner motor, and uh, yeah, and the gearing, especially we had in, in ZF, <laughs> luckily uh, made us, uh, the strain wave gear made us uh, able to, to do it in that compact way. Yeah? I was testing the bike and I noticed how powerful it was down low, like one single little pedal stroke and the bike almost wheelies with an insane amount of power. How have you achieved that low down? And, and the overrun you mentioned that you've programmed in, you, you could actually 
increase that if you wanted to? Yeah, for sure. So actually, we are able to do this because of all the high resolution sensoric we have inside. We have a really uh, high resolution uh, torque sensor to measure the driver's torque and also the cadence is very, very precise. We have and then uh, uh, on top we have in the back uh, in the back wheel the tone wheel to detect the speed very, very quick and, and accurate. And uh, the combination of the, those three sensors uh, enables us to react very, very quickly to the driver, what makes the natural riding feeling uh, of the motor. I've done a lot of work on this system over, over the full course of the development of the drive unit uh, and the drive system. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty, pretty unique and a pretty special beast. What we've managed to cram into there is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, it's got a sealed oil buff that's guaranteed for the lifetime of the system. You know, we test the systems to way over 30,000 kilometers. So that should give you a bit of an idea as to, to the longevity of it. On top of that, there's, there's also a clutch inside, which is something that's really unique within the, within the bike industry. And so what that means is when you have a, a negative torque event, as opposed to the system having to cut out electronically, it can maintain power, but at the same time can continue with the traction. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of tech in a really small package. And how much of the engineering from some of the previous technologies that ZF have worked on have made their way into this? For sure, we, we took over everything we had. We checked the portfolio and we found, uh, uh, for example, the gearing. Um, it's a reduction of uh, 1 to 50 and we took it over from car steering. It's also used in robotics. It's named uh, strain wave gear. Um, this is an example. Also the slip clutch Kieran was already talking about. We use for um, yeah, taking out uh, high torque events from the rear wheel and keep it spinning while the motor is going. We took from AT gearboxes like it's used in the 8AT gearboxes in ZF. It's kind of a traction clutch, slip clutch. When you're doing a technical climb and you hit on an obstacle and sometimes the bike stalls, well, what happens here is you get a, a, a slight feeling of, of the, you can hear the system going, the clutch engaging, but what happens is then it kind of accelerates you off the lip because the motor doesn't have to get back up to speed. So it's really quite a cool feature. And it's something that, you know, when, when you're on a technical climb and you slam into like a rock step or a route, then there's a slight pause uh, from the system where on other systems that will cut. Well, what that one does is it, the motor keeps spinning. So as soon as the, 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 the negative torque from the chain drops, the system then accelerates you off the obstacle. You've got this kind of like, a, it looks like either a mini rotor, mini disc rotor, or some other piece of tech. What, what is this? Yeah, we call it a tone wheel. So it's mounted uh, on, on the disc or on the rear wheel. And the sensor is getting the information of the wheel speed from this tiny little guy. So this is like a really high resolution sensor, I, I guess. It's, it's sampling at a much higher rate compared yeah. to... As opposed to having one magnet every wheel revolution, we get 50 signals. Yeah, more than 50. More than 50. <laughs> yeah, so it... it you know, you, you can do, because you're then running off of data and not off an algorithm, you can then actually be a lot more precise and, and we can tune the system a lot, uh, a lot sharper. The drive unit's really, really simple to, to attach and to detach from the, from the bike. It's literally four Allen bolts either side pinching the drive unit in. And what's really interesting as well to know is it's such a low Newton spec as it's, I think it's four to five Newton meters to hold the drive unit in place. And that's all it requires. Yeah. And there's absolutely no problem with taking it in and out. And again, the, the most complicated point of fitting and, and detaching the drive unit is actually getting the crank arms on and off. It does have quite a unique sonic signature when pedaling. Now that's down to the electric motor and the architecture in there, but unlike, I'd say the majority of other systems, to pretty confident with that statement, of having an electrical and a mechanical noise, you can only really detect the, the electrical noise. And again, with a company the size of ZF, with the acoustic chambers that we have, we also propose with the with the OEs to, to come and, and do some testing in-house to make the, the whole system, you know, to tune tune the noise that's coming out of it. However, when it comes to descending, it is completely silent. So it's really, really surprising, actually. The first time you hop on the system and you come down a, a big rattly descent, well, it's the bike that's making the noise, not the drive system, which makes quite a change uh, compared to the last few years. ZF is supplying two in-house battery sizes, a 500 and a 750 watt hour, along with the rest of the e-bike systems, all engineered directly by ZF in Germany. I notice that you've got a single rail system on here. 
And I think I might be right in that you can just use a single rail and have two, two different batteries in a bike. Yes, Is that yes correct? completely right. Yeah. yeah, we decided to go a different way here as well. Um, we didn't want uh, to have the two battery mounts which the customer needs to adjust and everything. So yeah, that's why we decided to go for the rail system, which is also an innovation, I guess. Um, it makes you really easy to take out the battery just from, from here. It's really easy for the customer or for the brand uh, to install this one into the uh, down tube of the bike, because you don't need to have uh, the, the lock here and here and need to adjust everything that is not rattling and so on, oh. which is also a reason for doing that because it doesn't rattle. Yeah? So you just uh, insert the battery like this and then this you just uh, pull down this and uh, the whole thing is towed together. So and now here there's also no play, which makes also a big uh, impact on having a quiet uh, bike in the downhill. Eh? Yeah, totally. And this one is compatible, as you said for the two batteries. So this is the small battery and here from this side we have the big one which is also in the same way compatible here. Yeah? That's really so you can both use both batteries, you can buy the bike with the small, get the big or the other way around. Yeah? So you don't need any packing wedges or anything no, nothing, like that? nothing, nothing. And actually you, you mentioned a really good point because it's only one single rail, you're not relying on tolerances of frames to clamp yes. it at either side. Yes. And I've owned a bike that was slightly out of tolerance and I noticed the battery didn't quite fit properly. And even with the adjustments I could make, it wasn't quite enough to clamp it down. Yes. But having this single mount here is a really good idea because it's just fixed to this, this, this point, one point in here. And you're right, batteries can rattle as well. Yes, so, they can. <laughs> yeah. So I guess with this, this clamp to the frame and the no backlash or rattle in the motor, that contributes to having yes. a really quiet system. Nice, man. It's super interesting to learn. And I'm blown away with the power of this. And I'm super excited to see like the app development. And you mentioned that users might be able to change things like overrun and things in, yes. in the future to their, their requirements. But well done, man. This is, this is really neat, super slick like totally so small and easy for brands to integrate. No bolt mounts on here can just be in the cradle almost in the frame yes, yes. To, to house it. And it looks really cool. So well done and thanks for chatting with us. Yeah, thanks.